right, just a quick disclaimer. Anytime you're working on a vehicle where you're checking the water and such in the radiator, always, always do it when it's cold, not when it's hot. Otherwise, you can really get burned. You can really get hurt, possibly even die. So don't do it. <laughs> good morning, YouTube. Well, at least it's morning where I'm at, wherever you're at. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever. But anyway, as you can see, I got the hood up on the Jeep this morning. And I'm not only going to be checking the Jeep, I'm also going to be checking the Toyota, the tractor, another truck, possibly another truck, possibly a side-by-side. -side. Anyway, <laughs> uh, with all those things, so yes, it's basically the same going through. You just need to get access to the radiator to where the water and the coolant are. So whenever you're going to have sub-zero freezing cold cold temperatures and there's a chance that your water might freeze in your engine and i'm talking about people that don't normally live in like the the upper states or the the areas that get really 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 cold because you should be running something completely different than a 50 50 mix where i live i'm in arkansas we should be running a 50 50 mix because we do get cold weather during the winter so with that being said I do have a tester. So this one is actually a peak. It's an antifreeze and coolant tester. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get our fluid checked in here. And then I'm gonna go around to the other vehicles. Just make sure that we're good because, because we, we have the Siberian Express coming our way. And it's gonna get cold this weekend, so. Let's go check in some fluids. All right, so as I did state in the disclaimer, always make sure that you're doing this when it's cold. And it actually looks like, well, we've had the, the Jeep serviced here recently. But it almost looks like that calf is leaking. I'll keep an eye on it. The water's not super low. But you want to be able to get down. Let me see if I can bring you guys in a little closer. Because I don't know if you can see that. All right, so right here, that's basically a hard stop. That's the, the edge of the, the cup going into your radiator. But there is a hole here. You can kind of see that that should be able to go into there. Like that to get down to where the, the fluid is because when it's cold it's not going to be up 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 to the top so let me see if i can get this hose down in here there we go and uh, let me get you guys back up on the stand and we'll get this tested up So it does, does have a fill line. So if you don't get it up to the fill line on the first try. Let me get it up to my fluid level. All right. So oh, yeah. with this pointing straight up and down, you want it to match on that line. You want this one to match right on that line, holding it straight up and down. And then you look to see where that arrow goes. So we're all the way at over negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So the Jeep will be good. All right, so now we're gonna move over to the Toyota. But as I was saying with the Jeep, right, these are some of your, 
your safeties. Right? It says while well, engine is cool, remove the radiator cap. Place hose in the radiator or into your overflow tank, which I did not show you on the Jeep. So I'll show you here on the truck because I think I have a fluid in my overflow tank. The Jeep we did not. And even if you're not mechanically inclined, you can still do this. It's super simple, checking your radiator. But if you don't know exactly where a rod goes, like if you have a rod for your uh, engine hood, just look. A lot of times they'll have like an arrow like this that tells you exactly where it goes. But most times it's, it's common sense. But all right, so radiator cap. And this is my overflow, but a lot of times if you check the hose that comes off right here at your radiator cap, and you just follow it to wherever it is in your engine compartment. It might not always be right here in the front, but I can open this up. I can look down in there. There's not really a whole lot of fluid in there, at least not enough to, to really check. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the radiator cap. Dang, I need to clean my batteries again. I need to switch this battery out. This thing is old, old, old. You can still service this battery. Yeah. But, alright, my water's up to the top, so that's good. I don't got leaks. It's not... You also want to look, if it's like super dirty, dirty brown, then uh, that's not good either. Alright, so... Let me get you guys put back up on a stand, and uh, let's get this thing tested. Ooh, I know mine's going to be a little dirtier than the Jeep was. Make sure you get it to that fill line. <clears throat> so get to the fluid level, hold it straight up and down, and I'm sitting at negative 20 ish so I think I will be okay because our area it does expect to get down to negative 20 with a wind chill but I think the coldest they're calling for here like actual temperature wise is like right around zero so but that's always going to be, you know, plus or minus, you know, two, give or take. But I think no taco will be okay. Chevy's at negative 15 freeze point. That's Fahrenheit or freedom height. <laughs> like some vehicles like the Chevy, you don't have access to the top of the radiator. So you come to the engine coolant reservoir and it has a mark on the side for cold. So it should have fluid in this tank at all times, even when the engine is cold.
If it doesn't, you're low on fluid. All right, next up is the Kubota. This is a MX5100 Kubota. Uh, once again, the other Kubota and this Kubota, not mine, these are my buddies, but he wanted me to, to check them out for him. Because I'm here and he's currently not. And uh, he's not gonna have time before the, the really cold weather comes in to get these checked out. So bring in your your front. There's a little pull pin down here. Boom, open dried up. Let out too much water. Whew. This one's not good. <laughs> Freeze point doesn't even measure, so this is basically straight water. Yeah, that's not good, especially with the cold snap coming. Okay, and with that, the tractor is the last thing I needed to check on my list. This one's still not done. It does need to be refilled with a antifreeze, uh, either a 50-50 mix, or you can always buy the concentrate and kind of mix that in yourself. Uh, just make sure that if you're utilizing the concentrate, read the instructions, see how much you need to put in there, and enough water. Because uh, unless you're living up in the northern, you know, territories to where it gets super, super cold to where you just want straight antifreeze, then at that point, you know, you should already know what you need to be doing. But if you live in zone seven <laughs> ish or in the south and you're not used to cold weather or at least not a lot of cold weather, it only comes around so often, don't neglect the vehicles that you own and the radiators because you might get caught up in a cold snap and your engine's going to bust because that water froze in there. So make sure you get out there, you're checking your things, go get a tester. If you don't have one, it's a great tool to have. And, uh, I'm going to get my butt out to the property and get some more cleanup done. So I definitely appreciate you guys for following along our journey. And even though this isn't our property maintenance and stuff like that, it's still something that really needed to be done. And uh, always check the, the links down in the description. Share it out to your friends. If you've made it this far, give us a subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. We do thank you. It's free. It doesn't hurt you none. And we got a lot more coming. A lot more coming. I promise. So buckle up, buttercup. And always thank a veteran at every chance you get. Not only on Veterans Day. And we'll see y'all on the next one. Bye-bye now.